I'm leaving these here, the whole video, because I just, I just feel like it's so fitting. If you didn't watch the last video, basically I said at the very end, what are we building towards? And it doesn't really, you know, matter what they do positively because history tells us that they'll just they'll just they'll just trade away the core of the team for a home run. I am not one of the people who are in the Mikel Bridges fan club. I think we all know that. Um, tonight is kind of one of the examples of why I, I'm 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 not really sold. Like y'all can, you know, be excited that the new number one jerseys are available and Brooklyn Bridges and all that fun stuff. You can do that if you want. Personally, I think y'all are in denial, but, you know, go go for whatever makes you happy. Who, who, who am I to say that you shouldn't be happy and enjoy the fun and shenanigans? By all means, go right on ahead. I, I, I just say don't get too attached because, again, history tells us. History tells us that we probably won't keep Buddy, but that's neither here nor there. But my main thing, my main takeaway from this game is looking at the game that Claxton had. Claxton played absolutely incredible. We lost, by the way. They 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 choked away a victory at home. Um, we were in arm's reach multiple times. You know, the Kings would pull away and we would fight our way back. The Kings would pull away, we fight our way back. We 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 play that defense. Jacques Vaughn played just to boot everyone on the bench. I mean, they gave it their all. It's just to a team that's got chemistry on their side, that's got development on their side, that's got true confidence on their side, we don't stand a chance. And those are the types of teams that we're going to constantly run into. Right now, we are in sixth place yet again, and we're only really a game away from dropping down to seventh. Because the Heat are starting to get their stuff together. Thankfully, the Hawks seem to be in this random purgatory where they can't seem to figure anything out. So at least we won't be the eighth seed. But it, we 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 we're free falling, man. And 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 if Atlanta gets it together and Miami gets it together, we're in the play-in. And I don't I don't have the confidence in this team that I once did. And and I I can't help but wonder. I can't help but wonder that my personal waiting game of just hoping we make it to the summer and then hope that the nets realize what they have and then build towards that is 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 a is a is a plan that's doomed to fail what i'm hinting at is claxton is having these amazing games and i don't get to speak on it enough because there's so many other things happening with this team but i want to make this a dedicated nick claxton video claxton is so good it's not even funny a lot of y'all think cam thomas is my favorite player on the team it's claxton like, I'm telling you, the kid's birthday's coming up. You better believe my present to myself is, well, actually, I'm going to buy a Ryan Howard jersey. I'm not going to lie to you. But if I had more money to spend, it would definitely be a Claxton jersey. And as a matter of fact, I might as well just go ahead and pull the trigger now because we'll end up trading him, I'm sure. But Claxton is not only my favorite, but he's, he's he, the... I hate the word potential. God, I hate potential. I hate it when we talk potential with Franny Lakina. I hate potential when we talk about Christas Porzingis. I hate potential when we're uh, talking about um, Ari McDonald. Like I, 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 I hate it. I hate it. it it's such a, it's, 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 it's such a cancerous phrase that gets overused and and is like an excuse for mediocrity. Like, oh, it's okay that so-and-so is buns because the potential is so high. The ceiling is so high. I, I hate that. God, I hate that. But I gotta use it. Claxton's potential is insane. Have we noticed the fact that this man has a jelly package like no other? I mean, and maybe that's dated terminology. I'm not sure, so I'll be more specific. Have you seen that man's layup package? I don't know what he learned from Kyrie, but it shows, y'all. It really shows with his ability to finish. I don't know what he learned from LaMarcus and Blake and Drummond and all the carousel of centers that we've had, but his post moves are nicer than a little bit. He got a floater and the floater got rangey range. I'm telling you, we talked about this a couple months ago, but I think he's better than Jared Allen and y'all know how I feel about Jared Allen. I mean, this man is so good. 
I mean, hit, hit, hit the Chanel Lil Wayne Drake song everyone slept on. So, so good. Oh my God. That man Claxton is incredible. And we're not even talking about the defense. We're just strictly focusing on offense right now. Claxton is so incredible. The man can run the ball by himself. He gets the fast break dunkulars. I mean, if we just, if we took the same amount of energy and effort that we put into Mikel and we put it in the individuals that we already have, imagine what we'd be building towards. And again, I'm not saying record-wise we'd be any better because Church of Blow It Up did not guarantee wins. Church of Blow It Up was simply just looking towards the future. Because if you look at the teams around the league, the better teams that are on the come up are the teams that have a general core. They sucked for a little bit, but then they naturally got better. And now look at them. The Kings are a wonderful example. How <coughs> oh, excuse me. How long has De'Aaron Fox been over there in Sacramento? The longest time. That general team has been there for a minutey minute. For a minutey minute at its core. They had a couple pieces here and there. And look where they are now. I hate using them as an example, but we gotta. Look at the Knicks. Hate, hate to say it, but look at the Knicks. They've had that same general core since I was there. And look what they've become. It's disgusting. I hate it. But look at what they built. You want to take it back further? You want to? You want to? You want to? Um, you want to take it back to? Um, I don't know the Golden State days. The, the the old the old classic example of look what happens when you have a core of players, and it's like a revolving door too. Like 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 how many times does Iguodala come back for season five? Like you know what I mean? Like. When you got a core and you build off of that, look what happened. Look at the Celtics, man. You want to talk about a, 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 a loyalty to a core and look what they're achieving. Look at the Celtics. They didn't have Marcus Smart over there since the Rondo days. And look what they've built. And again, you got the revolving door. You bring in uh, 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 Al Horford, bring them on back. You feel me? You got a core, look what they're able to do. I got in about a year or two, we're gonna be looking at Orlando and saying, huh, hmm. Terrence Ross been there a minute. But look at the kiddos they got over there and look at them start to put together wins. In about six years, assuming they don't trade everyone, we're gonna be looking at the Rockets. Like all those two immature bums, but look what they've accomplished. Look at uh, the, the, the Grizzlies. Look at any young team that is making some noise. Oh, another great example. Look at the Raptors. Same general team, but then eventually you make that one little itty bitty Oman move. You shed DeRozan, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. But you still got the same general core bringing Kawhi and win a championship. Like I'm telling you, the formula's right there. Now for a championship, I can't I can't guarantee that that'll work. Normally that just goes to who has the best player and who's able to, to remain healthy. But the good teams, it's 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 based on a core. Not you went and acquired people in free agency and you traded away some picks to or players to get some help for the free agency people. That very rarely happens. Like you've got your Miami Heat examples, but like even with that, that was a core and then you added two people in free agency. So it's not like it was like with us where it's like, we acquire people in free agency and then trade the depth to get help and then trade the help and you're stuck with bums and then the stars leave, right? And the, what, what, what they did, what they did was everything but the Harden trade, basically. That, 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 that's what I compare the Miami Heat super team experiment to. They did everything we did, but they didn't trade their core for more help. They they just they they just stuck with it. They never made the Harden trade, if you will. Stayed the course, 
figured it out, situation handled itself. What I'm trying to say is, we gotta, we gotta be, we gotta be actively building towards something. And I just, it's hard for me to accept that it's not Claxton and Cam Thomas. Now, Cam Thomas, I've borderline given up on. It's clear the Nets don't care about him. The Nets don't value him as anything important. So I'm already emotionally preparing myself to be detached and have the separation anxiety and all that stuff. Like, I'm already ready for that. Like when you leave your dog in a room by itself and you've been there the whole day, you don't hear the meow, meow. like I'm 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 prepared for the 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 ripping away or the ripping of the band-aid. I've been through this several times already, so I'm getting myself emotionally prepared for it. But Claxton, you just cannot let Claxton fall in that category. If we're gonna stick with Mikhail Bridges and them, which honestly, I, again, history has shown that they're probably not going to. The first disgruntled superstar that we hear, either in free agency or like on the last couple years of a contract, the Nets will probably jump at them and we'll be back in the same situation. But assuming they've learned their lesson and we're gonna stick with the core and we're not gonna make the same mistake again, I just hope Claxton is part of those plans. Mikel is Great, he, he hits shots sometimes, he plays defense sometimes, and that's great. I couldn't tell you what Cam Johnson does, I couldn't tell you what Finney Smith does. Spencer Dinwiddie, I don't mind. I, I, I really, really don't mind. I feel like he's doing his job. It's not his fault everyone else disappears. And maybe this is like a wild take. Maybe this is like Sever the Bond slowly like crossing over to like a new version of the dark side. But Spencer Dinwiddie is giving me, and, and, and this isn't a player comparison. This is just a, um, a comparison of a stance and a hill that I die on. I didn't like Harden. Then we got Harden and I saw what he did. And I was like, Wow, that's great at that position. I don't like Spencer Dinwiddie, but I'm seeing what he does. And with a couple of questionable decisions here and there, I like what he does. Could he have hit more foul shots tonight? Absolutely. But I don't think that's like the end. Like I'm not blaming the whole loss on Spencer. Spencer's the only one out there with a pulse. Like at least he's trying. Kind of like the Kyrie days. Like... I, I I never faulted Kyrie for trying. I knew he wasn't that guy, but I never faulted him for trying. At least he tries. With Mikel in them, they, they, they just slip into this like, like support character role because again, they're glorified role players. And it, it just it just boggles my mind how we get role players and then hand them the keys to the team and say, go be stars. So again, I'm, I'm not looking at Spencer any type of way because at least he tries. At least there's an understanding of, well, if no one else is going to be uh, um, 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 aggressive offensively, then I got I, I to gotta make it do what it do. I got to hit the doo-doo button. You feel me? So I'm not mad at Spencer. Mikel, not sold. Not in the slightest. Y'all can love them. I'm not sold on it. But regardless who I like and who I don't like, I just need Claxton to be a part of that future. I need Claxton to be a part of that future. We we just we just we just can't. If 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 if, if they don't have faith in Cam Thomas for whatever reason, he just goes in the Alonzo Trier category. It is what it is. But you cannot just cast aside Claxton like he is not such an amazing piece. I mean, look what he does. Let's look at the box score. Let's just, let, let's just look at the box score and just look at what this man did as far as a number-wise production. I thought the fact that he even came out of the game at all was wild. And I know he gets into foul trouble sometimes, but it's like, bro, like if... I don't know. I don't know. And did you, did you see... Did you see they didn't sign Norland's Noel to another 10-day? 
but then they signed some other like a 7-2 kid or something like that. Moses Brown or something like that. First of all, where was he? Number two, why sign Norlands Noel if you're going to give, again, it, did I not call that that was like the Norvell Pell signing part two? Weirdo stuff. Weirdo stuff. We we have such a, oh God, no. We have such a, such a strange team, such a strange organization. Uh, for the life of me, I don't know what we're building towards here, but let's just look upon, right? Let's just look upon what Mr. Claxton did. Claxton went out there. He had 14 points on basically 50% shooting. This man had an assist and 14 rebounds. You, you just, you, you just, you just can't. You just, you just can't. I, stuff like that is not normal. Like that, that's not normal production. That's insanity. He's stepping it up on the foul shots so they can't do the hack a clacks thing. Which again, borrowed the entire, you know, foul shooting animation from Kai set the feed and then the feet kind of like shuffle a little bit take the breath shot up pop the only difference is he ain't got no arc in a shot but maybe that's just because he's so tall i'm not really a shooting guy like that anyone who knows me personally knows i'm the last person to give anyone shooting advice that's not me but <laughs> like like i'm more of an edmund Sumner type dude like i can tell you about layups and like finding the holes in the defense and attacking the space and the splitting the doubles and all that like i can i can speak on that for days when it comes to shooting i know nothing about that but from what i've seen it seems like he was he was he was really working with Kyrie, which is great which is cool which i'm here for but things like that are not normal and i feel like we're we're we're, we're at this point where we have normalized the performance of claxton and are just Taking advantage, well, not taking advantage, but taking for granted the fact that he's there. And I don't think we should be doing that. I think as much praise as we give Mikel, we should give the same amount of praise to Claxton. Because Claxton is that guy. Remember, there was a period of time where he didn't even start. Remember that. He wasn't even starting. We went into this season and we're asking each other, yo, who's the starting center? We were concerned. Y'all was saying start uh, 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 Ben Simmons. Don't think I forgot about that. Don't think I forgot that y'all wanted Ben Simmons to start at center. I forget. So we've come a long way for someone who, who is clearly that option to the fact that we defend him against the Mitchell Robinsons of the world, that the M M M M Mitchell Robinsons of the world, we've come so far. And I feel like we're taking him for granted and we're not giving him his flowers. And if we are not careful, if we keep riding this hype train of ooh, shiny new toy Mikel, we are going to lose out on our core here. Watanabe comes in the game, immediately produces. Anytime Royce O'Neal sniffs the court, what is he doing? Handling on his business, going after the 50-50 balls, being aggressive, hitting the jump shots, allegedly. <laughs> hitting the threes, allegedly. You saw that, 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 that one sequence that he had out there with a certain someone certain Kessler Edwards, who, lookity, lookity, you give him minutes, he's a part of, of, of an entire rotation of a team that just clinched the playoff seed. I'm telling you, if we're not careful, people like Royce, people like Sumner, people, the, 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 the gauntlet of names go on. They are going to be just like Kessler Edwards, they're going to be just like any other individuals that we just let go and they go off and have these meteoric rises. And I'm not saying Kessler Edwards is like 
on someone's like fantasy chart of like having a fat head on the wall of Kessler Edward. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that he will go into a laundry list of individuals that were sitting here saying, oh, remember he was a net and we just kind of let him go. It's going to be a laundry list of those individuals. And, and there's no, there's no need to let it, um, to let it get to that point. I hope, I hope that the Nets understand what we have yet again, and I'm completely over wins and losses. I don't even care anymore. I really don't. I am focused on our long-term success. That was the point of the church of blow it up. We weren't going to do anything with KD and them anyway, so... I am focused on long-term success. Headbands off, you're getting realistic summer for the rest of the year. I hope we've learned from this and we understand what we need to do. I personally have no faith in the team, but assuming they've learned their lesson, we just need to make sure that that future we're building towards includes Claxton at the least. I'm prepared for Cam Thomas to walk. It's going to hurt. I'm going to cry. But I'm prepared for it. We'll probably never see Watson Abbey again. I'm prepared. Royce O'Neal is going to go into a gauntlet of individuals who are our workhorses who will inevitably go to the Nuggets and then we'll just have to, you know, just, just, just watch him from afar and say, look, it's Jeff Green, Bruce Brown, and Royce O'Neal. Hi, fellas. We sure did have some good times, didn't we? Like, it's going to happen. And before then, it was your Rondé Hollis Jeffersons. Uh, it was it was your Jared Dudleys. Like, like, like. Like, I, 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 I did the research. I seen where y'all came from. So it's a shuffle that y'all are all too familiar with, which is why it's just so, it, 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 it confuses me that I have to tussle with y'all on this because y'all have seen this movie before. This ain't new to y'all. This is new to me, but this ain't new to y'all. Y'all have done this before. So all I'm saying is I just hope this time we learn and we keep a general core that makes some sense. And Claxton to me is a untouchable, fresh with his click like the Huxtables. I don't think we can say that anymore. Bill Cosby's canceled. Anyway, I just hope Claxton's in the future. He's too good to let go. He's a foundational piece. I say build around him. I know they won't. But I say build around him. I think he's that good. I think I think we 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 we've gotten to a point where we just say like, oh, he's Clint Capella and are calling it a day. I think he's in that Carl Anthony Towns conversation. Now, can he shoot? No. But what, what, well, actually, we don't even know. We don't even know because we don't let him. So who knows what he's capable of? Who knows what that man is capable of? Whatever they end up doing, Claxton better be a part of it. That's all I'm saying. That's that's all I'm saying. Let me know your thoughts on tonight's game. I'll see y'all. I think Sunday is our next game. We play the Nuggets again. Whew, not looking forward to that. They're going to be looking for revenge on us. But, you know, let's hope for the best. And for anyone who cares, the Ben Simmons update is they hope he comes back. That's a, that's a whole other can of worms, because if he comes back, he's taking minutes from someone. And I don't, I, I, I might, I might jump off a bridge, <laughs> no pun intended, if I, if I see him getting minutes over Royce O'Neal. So it's, it's just, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, hopefully this was entertaining, and I'll see y'all next video. You're on Nets Republic. I'm Sever the Bond. I'm gonna go eat some baked macaroni and cheese. I'm lactose intolerant, but I just I just wanna feel something.